Here's the conceptual review for week 4's material, which is all about nucleosomes, chromatin, and chromosome structure. Also in this week, we introduced DNA transformation, which I'll talk about as well. I'll only briefly talk about nucleosomes, chromatin, and so forth. Basically know that chromosomes are the tightest form of DNA in our cells. They're only in the shape of chromosomes when the cell needs to move them during cell division. Otherwise, they're usually something more like chromatin. The most loose it can be is when DNA is being replicated or transcribed. If it's tight, think of it being locked because no proteins can access it. Usually when DNA is in the chromatin formation, it is just made up of DNA wrapped twice around histone complexes resembling beads on a string. When DNA is wrapped around histones, we call it a nucleosome. Histones have eight subunits, two copies of 2A, 2B, 3, and 4. There's also an H1 protein that helps keep it all together, but isn't part of the core histone. Instead, it's in the linker, which is the stretch of DNA that connects two different nucleosomes. Histones, being a protein, are made up of amino acids. Because its purpose is to be wrapped by DNA, and because DNA is negatively charged, histones have a lot of basic amino acids. Do you remember who's a basic guy? Or which three amino acids are basic? Now, as I said before, when DNA is too condensed or tightly packed, proteins cannot access it. Enzymes, known as HAT, H-A-T, acetylate the tails, taking away the positive charges of those tails. This loosens the DNA, allowing other enzymes to get in. HDAT's job is to remove the acetyl groups, bringing back the positive charge. This deactivates a gene by making it tight again. Think A for activating, DA for deactivating. Now, really quick. There's also an enzyme called micrococcal nuclease, ending in ACE, meaning it's an enzyme, and nucleo telling you it does something with nucleotides. Micrococcal nuclease cuts anywhere that is not bound to, and therefore protected by, histone proteins. Therefore, if you have a bunch of bees on a string and you let it incubate with micrococcal nuclease, it'll eat up the string between each bead, but will leave the rest. We'll have an exercise that will talk about this more. Now, onto the big topic of DNA transformation. The goal of DNA transformation is to get a foreign gene into bacteria, which can then be copied and expressed. For this purpose to work successfully, three things are needed in the vector, which is the name of the plasmid that we want the bacteria to take up. The three things are, one, an origin of replication, otherwise the plasmid would never be replicated, two, a selectable marker, which is a gene that gives it resistance to whatever we'll use to kill the bacteria that didn't take up the vector, and three, a polylinker, which is just an area of multiple restriction enzyme cut sites. This is where your insert will go. We'll start by inserting the gene into the vector. We do this by cutting the circular DNA with a restriction enzyme. Restriction enzymes look for a specific sequence on the DNA. Wherever they find it, they'll make a cut through both strands of DNA. This will produce sticky ends unique, unique to that restriction enzyme. Sticky ends are single-strand DNA that will readily base pair if the complements match. When we produce an insert, we will use the same restriction enzyme to create the same sticky ends, which can stick to the vector's sticky ends. If we're successful in getting the insert into the vector, our vector is ready to be taken up by the bacteria. Of course, until we see and study the bacteria growing on our plates, we don't know if the vector was created successfully. If done correctly, they would only be growing if they picked up this vector. In addition to the vector and the insert, there are other important players that play a supportive role. Without them, the process wouldn't work. So, as mentioned before, restriction enzymes cut the DNA allowing us to put the insert inside. Alkaline phosphatase is an enzyme that is used to take off free end phosphate groups, as shown in the picture. If phosphatase is added to the vector only, this prevents the vector from being able to close back on itself without the insert. It's possible that the sticky ends will come together, but won't actually stay together because ligase, which is our last supportive player, needs those phosphate groups to permanently fix the nick. The phosphate group it does end up using comes from the insert which hasn't been dephosphatized. Recall that sticky ends base pair through hydrogen bonds which are relatively weak. Because the stronger covalent bond of the, of the backbone, the phosphodiester bond, is broken, we'll need ligase to fix it. 